Mandragora. Some people may look at that damage it does and think, hey, this is yeah, another rubbish mythic. But mythics aren't always all about just doing insane amounts of damage and wiping out the troops in a single cast and things like that. So balance and act, and this thing for me is actually useful in a few different ways. Yes, the damage isn't initially great, even when it's boosted by the webbed enemies, but the way this troop can work with other troops and the fact that it webs a random enemy when matching purple gems thanks to that awesome third trait really transforms how good this mythic is to me. When an enemy is webbed, their magic is reduced to zero, and that is going to massively reduce the power output of their spells. So if we can entangle their troops at the same time, this makes us very, very safe from pretty much the two main different ways of causing damage in the game, skull damage and spell damage. And we could absolutely do that, while at the same time boosting up that slightly mediocre scatter damage to something a bit more usable. Let's take a look at the teams. All right, I've made two teams with this troop so far, one very safe based and one much more aggressive. And this is a safe one, but this is actually, I think, a, a pretty cool team, providing you don't mind a slower paced game, because it is so safe, it is unreal. The amount of different status effects going on on your, on your team, in your favour, is great, and the amount of status effects going on the enemy team is absolutely obscene. So let's take a look at why. Well, first of all, we know that we web a random enemy when matching purple gems, which is really cool. That reduces their magic to zero, which basically affects their spells massively, stops them doing any significant damage. With the weapon, we can explode this. This is going to explode green gems, grant a random status effect to our troop at the top, which is our main troop, as well as have a summon in case, in case things go wrong. But we're in elementalist class, so we also stun, freeze, burn and entangle random enemies when matching four or more gems, as well as free someone from the start, as well as give ourselves a barrier when matching brown gems. Aquaticus submerges all allies when matching four or more gems. So if we're against those King Gobtruffle, Queen Beatrix teams, a four match keeps us safe from them. The fact we're entangling enemies all over the place, and I forgot to mention that this also entangles the top troop when cast as well, means we're safe from skull-based teams. And the fact we're webbing everybody left, right and center means we're safe from heavy damage from teams. It's like you're protected from literally all types of damage with this team, apart from the single target spell damage, which again will be reduced anyway because of the web. And if anybody was on the team that is impervious to our web, like Zul Goth and Arachnian Weaver, things like that, we can cast Mirage Queen and curse them, making them normal enemies and liable for all those lovely status effects. So really cool. And we can look out for green to doom skulls at the same time. And we get a nice 50% start with mana with this team as well. So an all round really good team, defensive, but can kick out some decent damage at the same time by casting Mandragora. We even have a summon. We can change green to skulls, doom skulls, and we can do damage with this and gain more mana gen. So a really cool. The banner for this is just a plain old plus two blue banner because we use all the mana colors here. And elementalist class, really good for this. That fantastic elemental force and talent trees will have snap freeze, Insulated, Stone Circle, Watery Binding, Rock Solid, Lightning Strike, and Fortitude. Right, I'm just going to show this team one time because maybe everybody's cup of tea is a safe team. It has so many status effects going on it. It is absolutely nuts. Both good and bad. Uh, for us, we are going to web a random enemy when matching purple gems that lowers an enemy's magic to insignificant amounts most of the time. You can stun, freeze, burn and entangle a random enemy by matching four or more gems as well as free somebody from the start as well as gain a barrier when matching brown gems. For the Aquaticus, when we get a four match, we'll submerge all allies which is going to protect us from Queen, Bee, King, Gobtruffle teams, things like that. And even if the enemy had an impervious troop like Zulgoth or... What's his name? Arachnian Weaver. We can curse them and make them into normal troops, which means the web, the freeze, the burning tangle will actually work then. So all sorts of good and bad status effects going on with this team. Pretty cool. Not the quickest thing in the history of the world ever, but all about keeping things safe a lot of the time. I mean, look at it already. We've already got them burnt, frozen, stunned, entangled, webbed. We're submerged. We've got barriers. It's like... 
we're pretty much safe already apart from the fact that the top troop isn't entangled yet and we can fix that by casting this it's going to entangle the top troop there you go we're safe from all the types of damage these have got web their magic is going to be reduced oops wrong button deal four damage to an enemy deal three damage to an enemy boosted by skulls if they get any skulls they're not doing anything it's like so we can just go for it now and see what happens it's like yeah let's chip in some damage with aquaticus we can look out for any four matches to skulls on raji queen there we go they left us them skulls there and all them four matches are constantly just keeping the enemy burnt frozen stunned entangled The cool thing about scatter damage is it's the opposite of damage to all. Damage to all starts off strong and then gets weaker as it goes along. So obviously the less enemies, the less there are to dish out damage to all. But scatter damage works the opposite way. When there's four enemies, it's divided by four or, <coughs> excuse me, spread out amongst four enemies, which means it's reduced. But as there's less enemies, it's uh, concentrated onto those enemies, which means there's more damage. So now likely to pretty much wipe out and job done all right so let's do that one more time then i said i was going to show it once but i'll show it again this time a bit quicker without explaining everything because if you're lucky it can actually work pretty quick but already how safe we are on everything we're submerged we've got webs going on we've got damage going on potential to loop those four matches those perfect matches rather kind of happen by themselves so, yeah not bad and uh, very safe what we got oh, we'll have to cast this and every time we cast a weapon as well it gives our top troop do we need to keep safe a status effect so yeah not bad so this second team is not as safe as that first team but it is a lot more aggressive and this team can actually grow in power at the same time which for me is mandragora's main weak point just that low amount of scatter damage not helping it that great but we can boost it in mythialas a lot of people will have double gem and dragons because of the way we kept on getting duplicates when we were trying to get the resources to craft a diamantina and this gives two magic to all the purple allies when matching purple gems. So with two of them, that becomes four magic to all allies when matching purple gems. And we're going to be matching purple pretty much as much as we can with this team. And Amithialis also starts a dark storm at the start of battle, which is purple. And it has a chance for an extra turn at the same time. As well as create giant purple gems, which can boost our mana gen really, really quickly. So every purple, we're going to be webbing the enemy. We're going to be increasing the damage of our team at the same time. This will get boosted in magic. Mythialis will get boosted in magic. And Darkshot is a really good weapon for this. Kind of goes hand in hand with that new troop in a way. Deals magic-based damage to an enemy, then creates five purple gems boosted by webbed enemies. So with those auto webs when matching purple gems, we get three or four of the enemy webbed. And this is going to create the maximum amount of purple gems which again will charge up all our team as well as give magic boosts at the same time it's that straightforward so the class for this i'm going in a night weaver the new one because i want to get it boosted up and it works pretty well in this give two magic to all mystics when matching a purple again that's good for the hero because we're ordinarily missing out on that regarding the mythialis boost because it's not a purple based troop and regarding the talent trees we can have gloom we can have dark hunger plague bearer we can have backup because we don't need this because we're getting it from mythialis we can have stealthy dodge and rising shadows if you have it on 100 already so yeah really straightforward so let's dive into a couple of battles see how this works 
banner for this one i've gone for plus two purple plus one green minus one yellow banner of blood it is a warband banner but if you don't have that one just pick something else which gives a nice plus two burp purple benefit right let's uh, jump into a couple of battles then let's grab me stuff thank you very much where are we it's in a mirage that'll do level 12 bring it on We're looking to get the troop up first and foremost by collecting purple. If we do that, we get a web on the enemy at the same time, which is very nice indeed. And we are good to go. Right, all the world of purple storms there. This has got a reasonable chance of looping. And every time we collect that purple, we're getting a boost in power. We're already on 92 scatter damage. And our Amethialis has already gone up to 108 damage to all enemies because we've got two lots of that. Give two magic to all purple allies when matching purple gems so you don't collect purple you just keep casting this it does loop a lot of the time and look at all those webs the webs are just screwed up the whole enemy their damage now is just still one to an enemy three damage to an enemy one give one attack to the first ally useless apart from skull attacks they've been rendered <laughs> oh, excuse me that cost came out of nowhere utterly useless now we've got a mythialis charge doing 138 damage to all enemies all we need is a bit more damage. We've got another boost. 150, is that enough? No, we need one more. And that's without even thinking about casting the bottom one. And see you later, you lot, on your bikes, skateboards, didgeridoos, whatever you jump on. Didgeridoos? People don't jump on didgeridoos. What about? I'd like to see it, though. I was thinking of a pogo stick, and suddenly didgeridoo popped into my mind. Oh, yeah. I do wonder sometimes. Well, that, was, that was a rather nice little chain. So again, we can uh, keep casting this all the while it keeps looping. Because all the while it keeps looping, we're getting these massive boosts in power. You can get an extra turn from this at the same time. And if it leaves behind any of these giant gems, you can match them up. And fast track our way to getting yet more mana. Have we got any way of making this? Yes, we have. And that's both of them up, doing 140 cell. I didn't realise they were that high. I was just getting carried away with matching gems. But yeah, pretty cool team, that one. It um, does get powered up pretty quickly if you have the required troops. Nearly ready to go straight away. Always getting purple if you can. The power of web. Really, really cool. Come on. Give me the stuff I want. I haven't actually used a weapon yet. But when you get a lot of the enemies webbed, the weapon, the way it creates, yeah, purple, is really good. Watch this. We'll do damage to an enemy straight away as well as get an extra nine purple gems loads of them all over the place look really cool let's do it again just for fun you can actually loop with that now quite often this is going to create more purple got damage to all here and got an extra turn as well really easy team well, there you go. There's my first two teams for this new troop, Mandragora. The first one being very defensive with a slower-based game, and the second one being a lot more aggressive with a nice boost in magic at the same time. Let me know what you think of these teams and this mythic in general in the comments. Interested to hear what people think, because it's always interesting, because always people think differently about these mythics, and it's really good to get a nice range of different opinions but if you enjoyed this video found anything useful or helpful be really cool if you bash that like and subscribe button it really does help but most of all thanks for watching i'll catch you again next time bye for now mm -hmm.